Buck is making the formulation that uh, that um, gay people have it great in Israel because it's such a liberal society. There's been this talking point going around that I'd really like to address, which is that, oh, you know, you're gay and Hamas would do X, Y, and Z to gay people. And how could you support blah, 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 because you know they would just have you killed anyway. I find that to be such a false equivalency. And let me be entirely clear when I say I would stand up for the liberation of Palestine, even if every single one of them was homo. First off, those aren't talking points. Those are facts. Secondly, every single one of them are homophobic. So I would love to see you just go over there and say what you say here in your comfortable little space in America where many gays fought for you to be able to even say that. What a shame. Um, okay, so how, how, liberal, how liberal is Israel actually? Um, this is something people don't really take on because they're rightly too busy being aghast at the slaughter of the Palestinian people. Uh, but let's see what the marriage laws are actually like in Israel. Um, so this is, I took this from a source that you really can't say is anti-Israel. My Jewish learning. <laughs> that's, uh, that's about as pro-Israel as you're going to get. Civil marriage in Israel. Okay. According to the country's law, Marriages in Israel are performed by sanctioned religious authorities, be they Muslim, Jewish, Druze, or Christian. Within Israel, only the Israeli rabbinate can marry Jewish couples, and the Israeli rabbinate is an exclusively orthodox institution, so it insists that the marriages its rabbis perform be subject to the strictures of traditional halakha, Jewish law. Because of this policy, a significant portion of the Israeli population cannot marry in Israel. So we're not even talking about gays. That's off, that's off the table. Forget about that. Gays cannot get married in Israel. Now, we will talk about civil unions, but they cannot. And not only they, but pretty much nobody who is not, uh, does not fulfill the orthodox definition of being a Jew can actually get married within the boundaries of Israel. The law of return grants anyone with at least one Jewish grandparent and his or her spouse the right to immigrate to and settle in Israel and gain automatic citizenship. But the Israeli rabbinate will only perform the marriage of a person defined as Jewish by Orthodox halakha. In other words, someone born to a Jewish mother or converted through the Orthodox rabbinate. Now, you know what this means. Keaton's dreams just died. His dream of having a second marriage, yeah, right, renewing yeah. his vows in Israel, is dead because he is Jewish on his father's side. That's right. Keaton is not allowed plans. to get married in Israel. We were going to renew our vows there next year because the next year will be 10 years. But uh, yeah, He was going to do gonna it on the adjust. anniversary of the Nakba. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, as a result, thousands of immigrants admitted to Israel under the law of return cannot marry in Israel because the Israeli rabbinate does not recognize them as Jewish. Since these people are also not affiliated with any other religion, no other religious authority can marry them. The Israeli rabbinate will also not perform marriages prohibited by Jewish law. An interfaith marriage cannot take place in Israel because each of the sanctioned religious authorities in the state will only marry two people who both belong to that religion. By the way, as we were discussing the other day, you, you know who does allow interfaith marriage? Muslims. They, right. they are allowed to marry Christians. I looked it up. Yes, I was wrong about that. They can marry Christians and Jews. So in at least this respect, Muslims are more liberal on marriage than Orthodox Jews are, and the Orthodox Jews control marriage policy in Israel. A Cohen, a man of priestly lineage, yes, for the uninitiated, that is why you find so many Jews with the name Cohen. It is presumed if your name is Cohen, 
you are descended from the priestly class. Um, cannot marry a convert or divorce a a halakhic mamzer, someone born of an adulterous or incestuous relationship, cannot marry anyone other than another mamza, a woman whose husband cannot or does not grant her a Jewish divorce also cannot remarry. Wow, this sounds like a liberal utopia, doesn't it, Keaton? Wow, they're so liberal there. In 2010, Israel passed the civil union law, allowing a couple to marry civilly in Israel if they are both registered as officially not belonging to any religion. So, Buck, you might want to hold off on that conversion. Out of the 300,000 Israelis not recognized as Jewish by the Israeli rabbinate who have no other religious affiliation, only 30,000 are officially registered as without a religion, so only they can take advantage of this law. This law also does not help couples where one member of the couple is registered as Jewish, nor does it help a Jewish couple that cannot or do not want to marry through the Israeli rabbinate. Jewish Israelis who cannot or do not wish to marry through the Israeli rabbinate must explore other options. Since the Israeli population registry recognizes civil marriages performed abroad, a growing number of Israelis are marrying in civil ceremonies outside Israel and circumventing the rabbinate altogether. A lot of Israelis apparently go to Cyprus to get married uh, because of the strict regulations. Many religious leaders are concerned that civil marriage and divorce could create a deep rift within Israeli Jewry by enabling the possibility that many halakhic memzarim will be born in Israel. Yuri Paz, in an article on the website of Aish HaTorah, can you tell I got kicked out of Hebrew school when I was nine? An Orthodox Jewish educational organization explains that according to Jewish law, civil marriage, although not ideal, still counts as a valid marriage after the fact. Civil divorce, however, does not count as a valid divorce according to Jewish law. Therefore, if a couple were to marry, either in a religious or a civil ceremony, then divorce civilly without getting a religious divorce, and then the woman were to remarry civilly, any children produced in her second marriage would be mamzerim, since Jewish law would consider her still married to her first husband. You understand? They would consider these kids bastards, uh, so they could only marry another bastard within Israel. By instituting civil marriages and divorces in Israel, the argument goes, the number of mamzerim will rise. Israeli Jews who observe halakha will not be able to marry growing numbers of Israeli Jews whose parents or grandparents did not. Okay, so listen, I don't want to get it twisted. We always want to make honest arguments here. Yes, gay people like uh people who whose fathers are Jewish or have other reasons why they can't be married in an Orthodox ceremony can leave Israel or they actually ruled during the pandemic because it became an issue. The Israeli courts ruled you can do it online within jurisdictions that allow that. You can have a civil marriage, but you cannot have a religiously recognized marriage within Israel unless your marriage is sanctioned by the Orthodox rabbinate now that is that sounds like a kind of apartheid but it's not just an apartheid for muslims it's not just an apartheid for gay people it's an apartheid basically for everybody who does not qualify as a certain type of jew as my long uh, departed dear friend joey used to say i was not born under the firm of jew and jew unless you were born under the firm of jew and jew uh, you cannot get married in Israel. That doesn't sound like this Shangri-La liberal society to me. Now, there are some people who have it even worse than that. Do you want to say anything before we move on, Keaton? Nope, go ahead. All right, people who have it even worse than that, predictably, are the Palestinians. This is from 2022. This law has not changed. Israel's Knesset passes law barring Palestinian spouses. It was actually renewing a law that already had been on the books. 
Israel's parliament on Thursday passed a law denying naturalization to Palestinians from the occupied West Bank or Gaza married to Israeli citizens, forcing thousands of Palestinian families to either emigrate or live apart. The so-called citizenship law passed just before the Knesset disbanded for a holiday recess by a 45-15 majority vote that crossed coalition opposition lines. It replaced a similar temporary order that first passed during the height of a Palestinian uprising in 2003 and was renewed annually until it expired last July when the Knesset failed to secure a simple majority needed to extend it. Proponents say the law helps ensure Israel's security and maintains its Jewish character. Wow. I mean, if that's not an apartheid racist state, what is it? What is it? What do you what do you call that when they are openly saying we need to discriminate against a portion of the population in order to maintain a certain ethnic character? Some Knesset members said it was intended to prevent a gradual right of return for Palestinian refugees who were driven from their homes or fled during the 1948 war surrounding Israel's creation, all while Israel prepares to take in thousands of Ukrainian refugees. The state, quote, the state of Israel is Jewish, and so it will remain, said Simcha Rothman of the far-right religious Zionism party, a member of the opposition who brought the law forward with Interior Minister Ailet Shaked. Quote, today, God willing, Israel's defensive shield will be significantly strengthened, he told the Knesset hours before the vote. However, critics say the law discriminates against Israel's 21% Arab minority. And let me explain this. Those people who the Zionists love to hide behind. What do you mean it's in apartheid state? We have Arab people in the government. Okay, these are people who managed to hold on to their uh, land through the Nakba. And they are a very useful propaganda tool for the Israelis because it allows them to claim they're not an apartheid state. But as you can see, they have laws like this that ensure that this population cannot grow beyond that initial uh, population and its descendants. Um, however, critics say the law discriminates against Israel's 21% Arab minority who are Palestinian by heritage and Israeli by citizenship by barring them from extending citizenship and permanent residency rights to Palestinian spouses. Quote, it comes off as more xenophobic or racist than other laws because it's not only giving extra rights and privileges to Jewish people, but also preventing certain basic rights only from the Arab population, said Ruth Sha'er, a lawyer with the Association of Civil Rights in Israel. The law also bars the unification of Israeli citizens or residents and spouses from, quote, enemy states, such as Lebanon, Syria, and Iran. But it mostly affects Palestinian women and children, said Sha'er. It is a form of collective punishment, she added, because it infringes on the rights of an entire population based on the racist assumption that they are all prone to terrorism. Israel captured East Jerusalem, the West Bank, and Gaza in the 1967 Middle East War. It applies different sets of rules for Jews and Palestinians under its control. Okay, so, so Buck... You said that the people you were debating with needed to learn something. I hope you have learned something from this, because essentially what, what you are saying, what you are telling people is that if the rights of LGBTQ people are not what you would want them to be within Israel, that is paramount over all other people's rights. That is paramount over the rights of the Palestinian people who want to make honest arguments. Am I going to say you're just as good as a gay person in Saudi Arabia as you are in Israel? No, I'm not going to say that, but I will say you're a lot better off as an Arab or a Muslim or a Palestinian in Saudi Arabia than you are in Israel. But what you're saying is you don't care about that. What you're saying is your narrow identity concerns 
not only trump your feeling for these people's basic human rights, it trumps your feeling for these people's basic right to live. And to that, I have to respond. If you don't give a shit about anyone's rights outside of your narrow identity group, why should anyone give a shit about yours? Why should anyone care? Why should anyone who's not in your identity group care about your rights? If you are not able to extend that to another group that is suffering a kind of brutalization that, as you point out, people of your identity cannot even dream of in this country. But you don't seem to care about that. And you call this guy out for saying something that's actually very noble. Well, let me tell you something. This guy is more of a man than you will ever be, not because of what's between your legs, but because of what is coming out of your mouth. Now, as I saw this week, people can change their minds. And I got the impression of you as a basically good-hearted person. I hope you will take this in. I hope you will watch that Abby Martin video. I hope you will watch Tantora. And I hope your desire to grift and bring in a new Zionist audience or maybe please your relatives does not supersede your basic decency. And of course, you are welcome to come on and discuss this. Please clap.